Hello, and welcome to another tale taken right off the shelves at the heart of the jackals. As always, I'm your decisive host, Lothran, and there's so much more to be said, so let's get back to it. Grab a fulfilling meal, settle into a comfy spot, and adhere resolute inquiry to Thum, Part 9, The Skills of Serpents. Order on the board! Thum got up from his table with a flourish. Come with me, sir. He beckoned for the sept leader to follow him to the counter. Two piping hot Lambra teas, name of Thum! One of the servers rang the bell for the end of the order, as they realized that Thum was already there, awaiting the other reason he'd entered the trade cafe. Um, sorry, sir. We can't really keep up with a salesman such as yourself. Not a problem, lad. Guthrie. You can go into the cafe if you want. Thum gestured to the order he'd placed only a few minutes ago. Um, I'm, I'm a bit curious about what all the yelling is. Fair enough. Thum gestured for the waiter to hurry to the chalkboard off to one side. Food shipment. Mixed fruits and veggies. Dried. 100 kilos. Due. Uh, when did you say you'd get them here by, Guthrie? Uh, no, no sooner than a month from now? I, I could deal with someone else if the order is too small. We're, we're not a big sept. Nonsense, Guthrie. Business is business, and money is always money. Loom waved him off as he waited for the kid scrawling the order onto the chalkboard to turn his way. Price at 20 silver. The kid smiled as he jotted the number down. Thum had talked the man down a bit. Not too much, mind, but enough for there to be a decent profit for both of them. Too many of the younger traders in the depot were gutting potential clients. The waiters, this being a vital part of their job, could tell when a good deal had been struck. You want to see the rest of it? Thum asked as he scooped up their light meal. Uh, uh sure, I guess. Uh, just, just see how it works. Follow me! Thum twisted and weaved through a knot of men discussing a deal a little too close to the counter. He kept his tongue still and silent for the time being. Never reprimand in front of potential clients unless it's a severe and horrendous infraction. Thum led the young farmer through the cafe to the major transactions portion of the trade depot. He took a number and signed in at the first available table, men and women constantly sweeping in and out of the room about their daily business. Sorry about how dim it is in here. Ethgar's students are still working on different methods of providing safe and steadier light than we have right now. And, well, the stone below the ground, it's so much warmer than above. Still a terrible winter out there. The candles wavered above their heads as Thum took a seat at their assigned table. Um, it's, it's not a problem. It's, it's a lot like being at home in the sept. Honestly, I, I didn't expect for, for you to take up my sale. Your sale. It's the way we do things here. First come, first serve. No one is above anyone else. You have a need or a resource to be acquired. Well, I'll snap to it so you can be on your way. No need to make any more of this complicated than it needs to be. So, so what is all of this? Guthrie asked as he glanced around the throng of people bustling about him, maybe more than he'd ever seen in one place in one small tiny room. Uh, the large stone counter over there is acquisition exchange. Those kids are running orders from what we've bought and sold back and forth to the archive a floor below us. They're uh, their job seems crazy. I haven't seen one of them stop for even a second. My brothers and I played hard when we got into it, but these kids seem like they're throwing themselves into a pit of desolation. Yeah, Thumb smiled and gave a bit of a light laugh. <laughs> Pretty high turnover rate for their line of work. Pays good, though. Five silver a day for a freshie, as they call them, and depending on how little you screw up and how long you've been there, the job can pay up to 15 silver. 15 silver? Are you serious? In a day? Guthrie nearly spat his tea across the room at the idea of being paid a sum he and his family had toiled months to make. Yeah, like I said, high turnover rate. Most of them come from the city slums, looking for a quick fortune. A lot of the burnouts take their earnings and reinvest in one of Darth's schools. Uh, Thumb sipped at his sweet, piping hot liquid as he chatted about their setup. Uh, how, mu 
how much do you make? Guthrie asked after making sure he swallowed his swig of tea and placed the cup back on the table. <laughs> Thumb laughed low and long. It varies from day to day. Today's been sort of slow. Had a, had a rough night last night. Only about a hundred silver. Um, on average. I did a few good deals very early when I got up. Not my typical haul, really. Guthrie's eyes nearly flung themselves out of his face in shock. How, how much of that is me? Just, he couldn't keep himself from asking before the words were out of his face. Well, normally nothing. We have fees on, we have no fees on first time sales, sorry. But, if I were to take my cut on a standard deal, I'd get just a silver. Uh, I have seniority, so I could take two silver on any deal, even a first one. But, it's not a concern. So... So I'm a, I'm a waste of your time? Guthrie asked, staring down into his empty cup. Thum waved to a waitress for a refill. Not at all. I look at every deal as not only the profit I'm current, currently gaining from it, but the benefit to both parties and all future endeavors that they share. Oh, so you want me to come back and choose to do as much business here as possible? Of course. I own the exchange. I get a cut of all the deals no matter who does them. Oh, so as long as business is booming, you're raking in the silver. Guthrie cheered up a little bit. Gold too these days, Thum laughed. <laughs> See that knot over there? That's the investments corner. We're going to have to expand it into another building. Too much action each day. Keeps the place too busy. Anyway, if someone feels that they don't want to pay me my cut right away, they can bring it there and invest in a pen potential invention, operation, farm, or property, or whatnot. If they lose it, they owe me nothing. If they make profits on it, they have to pay me 1% of those profits for, I think this current standard contract is a year? Um, I'd have to go over it, but it's, it's close to that. Uh, Thumb took a few more biscuits of, off of the refill that the waitress presented them. Go ahead, Guthrie. I, I can see you eyeing these honeyed biscuits. They're on me. So... Even if people don't want to pay you, they can make, or more or less, you know, depending on their choices. Yeah, yeah, no force involved. Options are always better than not options. After a decent record of sales, traders can move on to different markets. Over there we have uh, commodities, some people call it necessities, mostly the same trades in bulk each day. Food, heat, tools, that sort of stuff. They don't see a lot of difference in their deals from day to day, but they make very steady cash. Excellent profession to educate a kid for. Thum turned around as he sipped at his tea. That door over there, that's Ethgar's inventor's market in that other room. Not a, not a lot of money that goes into that room comes out. But when it does, ooh boy, the mountains of cash that could be raked in. Lost and won some good deals in there. It's just the way it works. And then... Over there, uh, that's luxuries. Since last week it's been pretty volatile, sort of the reason why I was up above looking for marks. Uh, excuse me, marks? Oh, uh, slaying. It refers to a completed transaction. A mark on the board and then copied and sent to records. So, I'm just a mark then? No, no. It's just something people say. It's, it's not... You're a potential source of income, not only to yourself and your family back at the Sept, but to any number of potential encounters and transactions you might engage in after we part ways. If I were to offend you or you felt cheated in any way, well, that would be the furthest from what I desired of our interactions. Does that clear everything up? Thum sat back, finding that he'd been leaning heavily upon the hardwood table, hard-selling this whole Pathard City thing every chance he got, even though he wasn't the one who came up with the name. I, uh... People from the city have never treated me this way, especially, uh... Guthrie looked like he was stuck between two hungry Grekenwalds, unsure of what to do or say next. Especially not by an ollie, you mean. I get you. Thum smiled behind his mask, watching the other man squirm to come up with a different explanation. It's fine. I like the slang. I grew up poor, like most wezen. I don't see any difference between us. 
other than I'm excellent at the sale and know how and when to make a good joke or two. <laughs> Thum laughed lightly, showing the other man that he didn't want to be treated special because of what species of jackal he'd been born to. Guthrie still seemed quite uncomfortable with the situation and quickly excused himself. I, uh, I, I do have to go. Thank you for the tea, and he stuffed a few more biscuits quickly into his pockets. Uh, everything. Thank you, sir. I, I have to go. It's just Thum. Thum called after the retreating farmer. Have a nice day, he shouted to the annoyance of a few other patrons near his table. Thum ignored them as he went to the counter to sort the orders he'd acquired from the day. Hey, orders up. Cataloging listings. Thum drew the attention of one of the pair of managers. Things were beginning to get a bit hectic this time of day, so it wasn't unusual to see m multiple archive managers on the floor. A manager clutching stacks of papers and notes with both hands and his neck kicked an idle boy in his rump as he passed, mumbling for him to get back to work. Sorry, sir. The boy rushed to sort Thum's ledger for the day. Name? Thum Ivrit, Thum replied, leaning on the edge of the counter as he sipped at his tea. Uh, oh, I, uh... Out with it, boy, Thum shot back while trying his best to suppress his agitation. Uh, I'm new? He swallowed, shuffling nerv nervously in his very loose-fitting, untucked shirt and pants. A lot of the kids from the city had to be re-outfitted to be more presentable to customers. I, I can't do big orders yet. That's fine, Thum sorted his receipts. Just these five here, then. He handed over the slips to the that the boy could handle, placing Guthrie's on top and pushing them at the kid as he leaned over the counter to see if a certain someone was working in his usual spot in records. Martin! Hey! Mert! Martin twisted his head with a scowl that faded and morphed into a smile of glee as he realized who was calling him away from his accountings. Thum, what do you need? The head of records asked as he leaned against the frame of his office door. Thum strolled over to him. New protocols? He asked of the man as he handed over the three over 100 silver deals that he'd struck today. Uh, oh yeah, uh, Darth developed a new protocol for his school and the exchange at Northgate, so we're trying it here at Westgate too. Don't want to fall behind. It helps with uh, turnover and receipt theft and that sort of thing. Make sure the kids are trustworthy before you hand them large orders and the like. This one is a large, over a thousand. Darth said he's still working on categories. I'll do this one myself. Hey boy, Merton shouted to a kid wearing a blue cap, teetering on the edge of collapse with a haul of papers he was transporting. Take these mediums. Merton shoved the slips into one of the kid's pockets. As soon as you're done getting that paper where it's going, Merton backhand slapped the boy's head and lightly to send him on his way. What's the cap about? Seen that a few times. Thum asked as the pair walked into Merton's office to sit and chat. Oh, uh, that's my thing. My little addendum to Darth's protocol. Marks the boys as a medium on sight. Having been here a month and not screwed up too bad or too often, he can be trusted with orders between a hundred and a thousand. Red caps are above a thou, easily, and uh, no caps, they just got here. We haven't really been operating long enough for any true red caps to be handed out, but I gave it a pair this week to two of my best and most reliable. Merton dragged a bottle of Hiver Grey form out of one of the drawers of his desk. Thum reached out for his glass without even looking in that direction, so often that he'd found himself in this situation to find the act as easy as breathing. That have any effect? Thum sipped at the de delectable, airy, and effervescent liquor washing over his taste buds. Increased productivity across the board, a lot less freshies quitting after their first day. Merton rasped against the force of the large pool of liquor he'd just imbibed on. Seriously? It has that much of an effect? Thum leaned back, tipping dangerously in the hard wooden chair on the back two legs. Merton frowned at Thum's behavior, but he chose not to comment. Yeah, gave pay grades to each class, uh, made sure everybody knew them, gave percents to the red caps, standard half percent instead of a full one, you know, and uh, barely have to yell or chide anymore. I think... It lets them see where they could be and work to that. 
Thum balanced precariously in his chair, now on one leg and the occasional prodding foot on the other side of Burton's desk, constantly about to fall over but never actually losing his balance. Seems reasonable. Don't make it a thing for trade agents, though. <laughs> Merton laughed. No need. They've already done it. I saw you pointing out the various sections to that last customer. Woke up late today. Ugh. Last night was wild. Won't be doing that again till you talk me into it. Far too soon for my liking. Thum smiled, but remained silent. Yeah, see, the commodities section? There's a knot of blacksmiths from the city, and there's Alibor in his charred and dusty overalls working the a deal. You know, and they're all finding him more at ease than when he wears that suit that you always prefer. And then next to him is his little brother, the one that used to grow all and sell the vegetables in his apartment. Uh, he's wearing fairly clean overalls, laughing with some sept farmers from the other side of Hedrax Dome. Hedrax Dome? They came from that far away? Whom almost fell to a hilarious demise, the one Merton was always warning him about, but he just barely managed to put a foot beneath him as the chair clattered off to one side, and save the rest of his drink as he stood up laughing about the pain he'd almost brought himself. <laughs> Merton did his best to ignore the rough treatment his chair had just received. We've gotten a few nasty traders from who knows how far away. They must have smelled all the money we're minting and come to see what they can collect, Thum laughed. Uh, <laughs> Merton shared a good laugh, too. They said the same when, thing when they got here. They bought a lot near uh, that four-way we just started, building a road towards the northern seps. I told you that corner spot would be gone no matter how big we made it. I think their plan is to build it into several small stores and rent to a few different traders, gouge us on the prices, but keep their product mediocre to poor. Morton leaned back a little. Let them. It's not my problem when their shoddy equipment breaks after a single season. How's the tool and trade store coming? Uh, I have I have my notes or something here uh, where it's coming. Uh, Merton paused to sort through the papers piled upon his desk. Uh, foundation is up, work is going as planned. I had to change a few details because of that boiler thing for he, one of Ethgar's kids came up with. A boiler? Thum asked, sensing profits. Is that the one I invested in a month or so back? <laughs> Morton laughed lightly. No one shits in Pathard without Thum cutting a profit on it. Morton joked as he sorted through the various files on his desk. Normally, socially, I should be upset. But that saying, no matter how vulgar it is, is proving more true by the day. <laughs> so I'll let it slide if you explain this boiler thing. Um, I, I, can't, I can't find it right now. I uh, don't know his name off the top of my head. Uh, one of Ethgar's lads, I know. Based it on his grandma heating up their house when she cooked stew all day on her stove, he built a large, huge, cab-sized sealed pot with valves and a, and a bunch of things. Real sight to see. Anyway, pipes go into it, and then he heats the water and into those pipes, and that flows around the room, and in certain spots, the pipes have these... Uh, like these metal plates, like square shields that come off of them. It's, it's, you have to see it. And that heats up the air around them, I think. Don't quote me, I'm not, I'm not very sure on this, but... And this heats the whole room? Well, there's, there's kinks in it, dents and dings to work out, but it's way safer and more efficient than what we already do. Uh, hey, wait, what time is it? Uh, about three, I think? Merton checked his private timepiece. Yeah, three. Man, last night was wild. This day's pretty wrecked. Um, you stick here, Merton. I'm gonna go look over all my receipts for the month. Keep me... You know... Keep me informed about the business. Uh, and keep making me piles of money. Sure thing, boss, Merton yelled after Thum as he collected the chair his boss had neglected to put back in its proper place. And so it is. Our time together has once more come to its conclusion. As always, I've been your dutiful host, Lothran, and this has been Thum Part 9. 
the skills of serpents. Another tale pulled right from the shelves at the heart of the jackals. Now we must once more part our ways. Korvoth, guide them back to the safety they know far too well. Yes, sir, Lothran. A pleasant greeting and a fond farewell to each and all. Please leave all your comments, questions, and kindnesses down below. None of that awful, rude, or mean stuff, though. You keep that to yourself. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to help us learn, spread, and grow. Don't forget, we strongly encourage each and every one of you to do your utmost to stay safe out there. Good night and good luck. You'll need it. Bye-bye, everybody. See you again tomorrow for more stories. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. See you again. Bye-bye.